guys, so a few weeks back, I went through this interesting enrichment study on leopard geckos. In that study, one thing that kind of stood out to, I think, all of us was the fact that they recommended providing a large enough water bowl for your leopard gecko to submerge itself in it. And they found that the geckos in the test seemed to really like this large water bowl. We had a few ideas as to why this was. I know a lot of people in the comment section as well as me thought, you know, maybe the tanks were too dry. I also thought maybe the water bowl took up a lot of floor space or maybe it was placed near the window in a corner somewhere where a leopard gecko would kind of naturally walk around. So it's like, is it submerging itself or is it just accidentally walking into the water bowl? Well, I reached out to one of the people behind the study and they said the following. The water bowl use is really interesting and it is something that we see across a number of species including corn snakes and bearded dragons. When they have access to larger bowls in which they submerge, they use them. However, it remains a relatively unusual behaviour and anecdotally they seem to do it more when they first have access to a larger water bowl. This could be some sort of exploration of a novel stimulus or a novel sensation of being submerged. It is true that we likely underhydrate some of our reptiles, like crested geckos, chihuahuas, gargles, leeches, a lot of people say you just need to mist them, um, that'll be enough for them to drink the droplets, but actually I've found when I've put a bowl of water in my crested gecko tank, my chihuahua tank, they will go up and drink it, they will drink from standing water, and I actually think it's best to have that back up, in case you miss them down, they don't get enough hydration that they need at that point and it evaporates, um, I think it's far better to have a little bowl somewhere for them to drink. Also it can help increase that overall humidity. Anyway, as I mentioned in that video, I was going to try this out with one of my geckos. I know a few people are going to try it with theirs too. I'd love to know how you got on. But I decided to try this with Maui. Now, the bowl that I'm using is this large Haberstadt bowl. I'm not sure of the exact measurements, but as you can see, it's pretty large. And Maui can certainly fit himself in there. I decided to place this in the middle area of the tank. I didn't want to place it near the front of the tank or at the sides where I know that... Maui's definitely going to walk, so it would almost give us a false positive that he's using it. Um, so I decided to put it here and try to make the area as flat as possible, so there was no way the bowl could fall over or it was going to be to one side. I did accidentally wake Maui up in the process, so... I decided to add this during the day as well, just because by the time Maui fully emerges in the evening, it will be something new. Whereas if I put it in whilst he's there, he might just naturally be curious as to what I'm doing. So once again, might give us a false positive. I then added water and I just use bottled water. I use this in my mister. I use this to hydrate my leopard geckos. Some people use tap water that they left out for 24 hours. Some people will use treatments with their tap water. If you can't drink the tap water, if it's not safe for you, it's not safe for your pets. Um, but it's totally up to you. This is what I'm using and I just popped it in there. There's water from a glacier in Alaska. I use Bernie's camera for Maui just because it's already sort of there and it can record 24-7 and not take up loads of memory and it's easy to watch back so that's what I'm doing. So night one the camera picked up Maui investigating the bowl at around 9pm so lots of tongue flicking probably just trying to figure out what this new thing is. I did decide to use a brand new bowl rather than one maybe I'd used with a reptile before and I disinfected. I just wanted something that was completely clear of any kind of scent. Obviously it's going to have some kind of scent but nothing like not like I've used a bowl with Diego so that has a scent of a male leopard gecko on it. I didn't want any of that so this is brand new. I also caught Maui attempting to stick his head under the bowl so I half expected this I have seen normally with females during the summer they will sometimes dig under the bowl and this is a particularly heavy bowl so I didn't want him to do that so I did leave a gap on one side so if that curiosity got to him he could at least stick his head under but it's supported by slate so it wouldn't fall on him and he couldn't dig under it so that was very important from about midnight all the way through to 5.30 a.m., Maui was very active in his enclosure, mainly climbing. Um, I think if anything comes from all of these clips that we see in this video today, 
Leopard geckos are very active and very much enjoy climbing. I think that's how Maui remains so kind of buff. He's quite a strong, muscular leopard gecko. And ever since I got him, he's had access to climbing. And that's if one thing I can encourage you to do for enrichment is give them some climbing opportunities. I'd recommend like the cork branches, something wide enough that will support them, but they absolutely love it. As you can see, he's always kind of coming back to the bowl, trying to figure out what it is, but he's not drinking or climbing into it. But then this happened. 5.14 a.m. He dipped his toes into the bowl and gave the surface of the water a flick of the tongue. Now, granted, he wasn't in there very long. He kind of actively seemed to be keeping as many legs out of the water as he possibly could. And then he left. But he finally plucked up the courage to go into the water. Now, one thing I didn't mention is I also kept his regular water bowl in the tank because I didn't want, once again, to force him to use this bigger water bowl because that's his only water source. The thing was to see really if he was seeking out an area of high humidity like this water to submerge himself in, which is something the study found their leopard geckos did. So he still does have his little water bowl in there in case he wants to drink, but of course he could drink out of this as well. Night two was pretty uneventful. <laughs> Though Maui did do, once again, a lot of climbing and exploring, he wasn't much interested in the water bowl. And from what I could see from all of the footage, which was triggered to record every time it detect movement, which was by the bowl, Maui didn't once set foot in or drink from the large bowl. Now, I've never actually set a camera on one of my leopard geckos 24-7, and I've got to say, this footage has just shown me just how active they are and for how long. Like, my leopard geckos probably wake up around 6, 7 p.m. And although throughout the evening, sometimes they're asleep, sometimes they're moving around, it seems like after midnight until about 4 or 5 a.m., they're just going around, climbing, doing all sorts. They're very, very active. And that's why I like to encourage people, if they can, to provide as much room as possible. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was going to document the whole week, but every evening it was um, Maui didn't explore the water bowl. <laughs> I honestly thought maybe at first you have that initial like inquisitivity. Um, but then that kind of wore off very quickly. Like, even now, it's like he could walk through it and he's like, no, I'm going in my hide. It seems like he'll walk around it a lot, but he's not necessarily going in it. But yeah, this sort of experiment hasn't really gone how I thought. I thought we might get a bit more action. Since that video, though, when I talked about that experiment, have any of you guys tried it? Have you noticed something different? I know somebody, um, I believe it's David, tried it with his gecko and she started to kick dirt in it which kind of makes sense because this time of year they could be ovulating, they could be trying to dampen the soil to find a nice place to uh, lay eggs. So maybe it's different with females, maybe it's different if your gecko is about to shed, but I think for this experiment I don't think a bowl is going to be useful, especially a bowl this big. I think something like my blue tongue skink, he's an Indonesian, likes high humidity, I think he'd quite like um, he would need a larger bowl, but a large place to just soak himself in. Leopard geckos, not so much. Hi, Maui. He knows it's food time, so he's like, okay, why are you talking? Why aren't you getting my food? Come here, Mal. So, yeah, I hope you've found this somewhat interesting. Hopefully that's answered a question for you. At least Maui doesn't seem to really want water. Do you keep animals that do like to be submerged? Have you found something different? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching and goodbye.